Hello folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to see how we can ingest data from our S3 bucket into your Elasticsearch domain. Why this would be useful? Think of a scenario where your application is generating a lot of logs or think of a cloud trail dumping all the logs into your S3 bucket. Then you would want to do some real time analysis on this data. So what you would do is typically put them into an S3 bucket and trigger the notification to a Lambda function and Lambda will pick up those files and ingest them into your Elasticsearch domain. Then you can run your queries there or build some dashboards so that you can find the most important data that is in the logs and have a nice visualization of that data. So let us go ahead and see how we can do this. Once again, I have written a GitHub article that will help us to do that. Let us go ahead and see the instructions that needs to be set up. Here you can see the article that has been written as usual and there are some prerequisites that we need to demonstrate this activity. The first thing is we need an S3 bucket where your logs are going to come and reside. So I have already created an S3 bucket and I've named it as S3 log destination. And under that I have a couple of directories. One is called as logs where all our logs are going to fall in. And I have one more directory which is called as log ingester where I'm going to store the Lambda function that is going to be used whenever the new log is coming in. So you can have a different directory structure but the main thing is we need a bucket which will hold all this information. So the next thing is we need an elastic search domain. Again, uh, if we have not done that, you can go ahead and get the help here. As you mentioned here, I have an elastic search domain and it is publicly accessible at this moment. But in your enterprise setup, mostly you will have to put it into a VPC and run the Lambda function also in the same VPC so they can communicate with each other. But since this is a demonstration, I've made the access very simple so that my Lambda can publicly access my elastic search domain so if you want to change the access policy of your uh, elastic search domain you can go ahead and do that but let us not get into that activity today so if i go to my cluster health you can see here at this moment uh, my cluster is in good health it's mostly green or amber and then there are some searchable documents that was there and it, you see here there is some information there but at this moment i don't have any indices only the kibana index i removed all the data so at this moment, it is a fresh cluster without any information. So the another way that I usually sometimes visualize it using the plugin that I already demonstrated. So in this plugin, you can see here as of now, there are no indices also, only the Kibana index is there. So that is the second prerequisite. And finally, we need an Amazon Linux machine so that we can go ahead and process some uh, Lambda function. That is, uh, we need to build our package that will be incorporated into our lambda function which gets executed so for that we need a linux machine and this linux machine we needs to have the aws cli so that we can upload the code into s3 itself and as you know with every lambda function you need an iam role in this case i need an iam role with this particular permission so if i go to my iam section i have a role which is called as s3 es ingester bot and then i also have an lambda execute a role attached to my I am ro uh, role. So now that we all our prerequisites are done, then the next step is creating our Lambda deployment package. So I've written all the instructions that you need to make the de deployment package. So let us go ahead and just copy paste these commands. The first thing is we need a Python pip and zip command. The pip is uh, required so that we can install the virtual environment. So I'm just going to copy these two commands here. So I'm just going to paste it. This is the AWS uh, Amazon Linux uh, instance that is having the uh, profile to access the S3 bucket. Let us go ahead and build our packages. So the first thing is installing pip command that is also done. And the next thing is installing virtual ENV environment that is also done. So the next step for us is to make the directory and then create a virtual environment and install the required packages and freeze the requirements. So let us go ahead and do that. So it is going to take a minute for it to install and collect all the packages and there we go. So we have installed our package. If I go to an ls-l, you can see here all these packages have been downloaded and installed and ready for us to package into my Lambda deployment function. Before that, we need to actually copy the actual code which needs to be uh, in the package. That code is there in our GitHub repository. Let us copy it here. You can see here this step next step says copy the code into a repo where is this code here if you just scroll up you can see here there is an lambda the espy that is the python file and i'm just going to make a raw of, of this and then go ahead and copy the entire code here 
So let's do that. So here I'm copied the code already. I'm going to paste the code here. Let me just go ahead and do cat. So the file name is mandatorily has to be this way. If you change this file name, then you need to change the Lambda handler as well. So I'm just going to paste the code that we copied there. Then press control D. And then if I do LSF and LART, you will find that there is a new file that has been created. I'm just going to make sure the permissions for this file is 754 so that Lambda can execute this file. So we are done here with the most of the things. So the only step that is left out is packaging our Lambda runtime. You see here we change the permissions also. We just need to package our uh, uh, code and then send it into our S3 bucket. So we can go ahead and execute these two commands. So it is going to zip all the contents that is in my directory and then it is going to create a zip file and that zip file will be stored here that is slash var s3 to es dot zip there and then it is going to upload everything into my s3 bucket now it has also uploaded it to my s3 buckets if i go ahead and check it out we'll find it there so if I go to my S3 bucket now under log ingester, if you see here, there is no objects. But if I refresh my screen, it says that this log object was yeah, uploaded just now and it has about 14.5 MB of size. So we have created our zip file. We have uploaded into our uh, S3 bucket. Now its point is creating the Lambda function itself. So for creating the Lambda function, let us go ahead and start, begin it. So click on create function. I'm going to call it as s3 log ingester and we can run it in python latest version this code is written for that and remember we have created a role already so i'm just going to go ahead and choose the role which is called as s3 ingester create function now now it, the first thing that you will notice is where do you update your code here so here what we are going to choose is choose a file from amazon s3 so it will need to put in the url here so let us go ahead and copy the url from here so take this URL, put in here, and then you need to configure your triggers. But before that, let us go ahead and click on save once. You can do the triggers from here or you can do it from your S3 bucket also. So I'm going to show you how you can do it from your S3 bucket. Go to your S3 section and let us go to the directory where we need to trigger it from slash logs. I'm sorry. Let us go to the root folder where you will have the properties. Under properties, if you scroll down, you will have events. So I see that there is already one event. I'm just going to delete it and show you how to recreate it. Just going to delete it, add on notification. And then I'm just going to say S3 log ingest or ingester event. And whenever an object is created, I want to push that code into my, uh, push that uh, file into my Lambda event. So I'm just going to choose all object create events and then I want it to be triggered only when the file is uploaded to my prefix as logs slash. And if you have some files which is .txt or uh, .csv, then you can choose only that option. Otherwise, you can go ahead and leave it as empty so that all the files will trigger the notification. Where do I send it? Now I'm going to send it to my lambda function. And to which lambda function? We remember we created as S3 log ingester. I'm going to choose that and click on save. So now our notification is set. If I go back here and if i go ahead remember now it is all fine if i refresh my screen let me okay let me refresh it with this way we will find the s3 um, trigger for this lambda function is also configured and one more thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to increase my time to one minute so that uh, lambda will have enough time to process the logs and push it into my elastic search domain so the final thing how to see whether everything is working now is I'm just going to go to my monitoring section. As of now, it should not have triggered anything. It's all plain and simple. So we are going to upload some files into our S3 bucket now. So if I go to log section, click on upload. I have selected a very simple uh, log file here. I'm just going to click on upload. And this is going to take just a second. So it has got uploaded and if i go to my lambda function and click on this it takes a minute or two for the triggers to show up here but meanwhile if i go to my cloudwatch uh, log groups we should definitely be see seeing some log groups here as soon as my uh, lambda function gets triggered so i think we call it as s3 log ingester you can see here already it has been triggered 
and let me give it a minute you see here the log is getting ingested here and one more thing that uh, i forgot to mention here is uh, when you're configuring your lambda function you need to make sure your handler is s3 to es dot lambda handler the default will be like lambda underscore function or something like that but you need to change this because remember we created a file s3 to us and that file name has to be prefixed under the before the function that is being called so make sure that you are calling it this way and if i go to my elastic search head plugin now and refresh my page here we should be able to see a new index which is called as s3 to es so here we go you have a new index and if we want to browse the data here let us go to our browser and if i go and select only this one we'll be seeing the uh, file that we uploaded this is the file we uploaded and the data is uh, here these are all the data that was in the content this is the content section of that entry in the file so there are at least uh, some 300 records or some things like that if i even go to my kibana section if i refresh here we'll be seeing another index here and if i go to my kibana and i set up my index let us say i want to create a new index pattern which is called as let us say and put a star there does it match it yep we match it click on next and then click on create index pattern and let us go ahead and discover the log files that has been selected so the index that we just now created is s3 to es star so i'm just going to choose that and you can see here the data sample is also there which is on today's date that is 9th of uh, december 2018 so if i go to my s3 bucket here and you can see here this is the bucket and i'm just going to see if i can download it and see the contents of this file so the contents of this file is something like insecure warning and then there is a lib connection pool in secure request warning and if i go here we should be able to see the same messages that are here so this is how you push the messages that are coming from your s3 bucket into your elastic search for doing some dashboarding or doing some analysis so do try this in your account if you have any trouble go ahead and put them in the comment section i'll be happy to help them with you thanks for watching happy learning